I'd like to talk about a couple of tools called Unstitch and Offset. These are pretty powerful tools uh, related to the creation of solid models and machining of solid models. Uh, whether you're creating solid models for actual parts or fixtures, or if you're cre creating construction geometry, ideally to help you get better tool path, these tools I think you'll find are pretty going to be pretty useful. What I have right now is a, th a setup on a three-axis vertical mill. That's the MDDA I have selected, three-axis vertical mill. I have a couple of vices on a subplate, and I have a part that kind of looks like a dog bone. Now, what's particular about this part, peculiar about this part, is uh, we have these angles here. If I turn on face selection, these angles I'm referring to, uh, it's something odd, like 57 and a half degrees. So it's a weird angle that you wouldn't normally have a chamfer tool already pre-made to machine these with a standard contour. So we would want to machine these with some type of end mill with a radius on it, whether it be a bull nose or a ball, no, ball end mill. In this particular case, we're going to use a 3 8 inch diameter ball end mill. And I'm going to use the process, which is a contour process. A surfacing process, I'm sorry. So we're going to use surfacing. Uh, we're going to select that end mill. And to apply toolpath to this surface, I want to make sure my Z minus number is below the bottom extent of that solid face on that surface. So I'm going to go minus one inch. Uh, my step overs are going to be 100 thou, just so I can uh, get to some quick toolpath and visually see what we're doing here. So I'm going to select these three faces, and I'm going to click do it. So you can see my toolpath is machining all of those faces, but it is interrupted by these slots and holes that I have drilled. If you wanted to see a quick uh, simulation of this and why this would not be ideal. I'm coming from the bottom up so I can use the periphery of the end mill. So not great. So what I'd like to show you is uh, the unstitch tool. Now, unstitch is a tool under your solid modeling palette. Now, usually your palette opens up with just this first uh, section of the palette. So I like to keep these second ones open. And you can actually connect the second and third palette to the bottom of the first so that when you move the top one around, they all move uh, together. And when you close it and open it back up, they all open together. So the unstitch tool that we're talking about is the fourth one on the bottom row palette, unstitch solid. Now there's a few options in here, and I typically have the middle three options checked. Uh, unless I want to create a positive or a, um, a plug from whatever I'm going to unstitch, I would have this selected, but typically I have it deselected. Now the way this works is it essentially heals features from your model. So for instance, if I have on my face selection, which enables me to select a single face on my solid model, I can select, say, this inner this hole, which is through the bottom of the part. And if I click Unstitch, do it, you can see it heals that model. If I selected and held down Control to multiple select all of these faces, I could heal this entire slot and make a nice smooth surface here. Now, before I get too much further, one of the things that I always advise is that when you start modifying models, this is an imported model, so I'm assuming you would have in imported a uh, customer's part or solid model from your engineering department. What I like to do is double click that, which will put that model into the body bag. Before I start modifying it, I will select that part one click in the body bag and I will hit Control D. What well, Control D will make an exact duplicate of that model and bring it out here in space. And I like to put it in the body bag first so I can really delineate and tell the difference between the two models. So while this model's in the body bag, I'll slow click on the name and I'll rename this something like original. So that lets me know that this is the original part model that came from the customer or the engineering department. And I don't want to mess with that one. I don't want to modify that model. But the one that's out here in the workspace is one that I can mess with as much as I want. So when going back to this, what I'd like to do is heal both of these slots and through holes. So again, I can select, manually select this. I'm holding down control so I can select all of these faces. Open up my unstitch tool and click do it. And they're gone. No problem there. 
Now, if I wanted to do a little bit of a shortcut, I could hold down shift and do a window drag and it will select all of the faces that that window touches. I can hold, I, I selected a little bit too much, so I can hold down control and deselect that and not lose my other selection. I'll rotate, rotate around. I'll select this face also. And I will unstitch that. Now, when you're unstitching models, it actually the numbers actually have to make sense. So for instance, if I selected this face and try to unstitch it, it will let me know I can't heal that wound because when you unstitch a model, the software does take into account any adjacent faces that are touching that particular face. So I can't unstitch this face because I have a couple of tangent faces that are in contact with it. So the feature has to make sense if you're trying to unstitch it. So having healed the holes and slots that I had in that face, I could go back to my part. Now you see that part, I still have toolpath that's associated with that original model. So what I'm going to do, and it brought it out of the body bag and back into the workspace so that they were both on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is put that one back in the body bag with the slots so that I have just the one with the slots. Now if I click redo, you see I have nice continual toolpath to machine that chamfer. Much better. So that's one practical example of why you would want to use unstitch. Now you could take this a step further and I'm going to talk about the offset tool. So I have pretty good toolpath here, but one thing I do not like is this solid gray line is the approach feed move. So it's a feeding down on the edge of my part and I'd like to have a little bit of clearance there. So what I can actually do is go in here and select this fillet, select this fillet. I'm sorry, radius, and I can unstitch those. So I now have a sharp corner here and a sharp corner here. Now what this will allow me to do is I can now select this face and I'll rotate around and select this face and I can offset those faces or add material to those faces which will allow this chamfered surface to be longer. So my tool will basically get a lead in and lead out and enter and exit the stock a little bit more cleanly and not change directions on the actual material. So to use my offset, this it would be the first tile in my third palette in my solid modeling. So if I go to offset, I could allow this to say offset that face 200 thousandths. And if you watch that face, it actually grows that face and it actually grew the one back here. You see it's past the ends of my toolpath. So if I double click my operation to wake it back up, because I've modified my solid model, it says this toolpath is no longer associated with the solid model. So I just simply need to close this out, reselect my model, and reapply my toolpath. And now it's nice and extended. So when I run my simulation, you can see that it approaches and changes direction off the side of the actual stock. So I, I'll get a much better tool life and a much cleaner tool path. So that is one practical example of how you could use offset and unstitch to help both get better tool path and help you create uh, better models. Thank you.